All right, guys, welcome to the garage. Today we're talking about Tesla charging. I want to go over the three different ways you can charge a car at home, the two different products that Tesla has, and a few things to watch out for. Okay, we're looking at these different options that Tesla offers to be able to charge the cars at home. And that's the real benefit to these cars, being able to charge the car at home, you know, at night while you're sleeping, it's charge back up to, you know, your set limit. You can change the, the charge limit. I'll show you how that works. Let's talk about this. This is called the mobile connector. I don't know if Tesla's still offering these. For a while, they offered these with the car. Now they're the $300 option to be able to include this. For $300, here's what you get. You get this mobile connector. It's got a, a length of cord. Ones have this black box. Older ones have like a silver box. There's been a few uh, generations of this over the time. It includes two charging adapters, okay? This one's the NEMA 1450. This would plug into like a, uh, it's called the NEMA 1450 plug. This is 240 volts. The most that it can charge with this plug and this cord is 32 amps. So whether you have a 40 amp or a 50 amp breaker installed on your service, it can only charge the maximum of 32 amps, which for the Model Y, it's still probably close to 30 miles of range per hour, which really isn't bad and probably sufficient for most people's needs. So this works really well. The cool thing with this box is you can swap out the different plugs. Tesla sells uh, five or six different plugs. So if you have different styles of plugs with different amperages, you can buy the plug to accommodate into your plug, which is nice. You could buy that kit, keep it in your car. Okay, then to swap out, this is the 120 volt 15 amp plug. This will go into a regular 15 amp household standard outlet. I hear a lot of people use this as their daily charging option. This is only going to charge like three or four miles of range per hour. I don't think this, this is not a long-term solution because it's not going to charge your car, car very fast. It's not very efficient. It's not very efficient because when your car is charging, it's taking up power to, 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 power, to keep the car on, to power up the electronics, the charger. This is charging so slow that it just can't keep up. And, and so I would say have this available for temporary solutions. Like the few times I've used this is I've been traveling, staying at a relative's house, and I was able to plug in and got 30 miles of range overnight, right? Just barely enough to uh, make it even worth it. So here's just a demonstration. This is just a regular 15 amp outlet. It has 14 gauge wire. wire. It's wired on a 15 amp breaker, it's in my garage, and if I plug this in, you just plug it in there, it powers up, and then we just stretch this over and we plug this into the, into the car. Okay, there's a few ways uh, to open up the charge port. One is you can push on it like that. You can push on this button. On the app, on the main screen, you can hit open charge port, or you can do it from the screen. So there's a lot of different ways. When it's white, you can plug in. Okay, I've got this plugged in here. You can see here on the chart, so if you go to charging screen, you can see how you can adjust the amperage. I can go, the max is 12, and it can only go at 12 amps. That's the maximum charge because it's a 15 amp outlet. So you look look at the charge per miles, miles per hour, three miles per hour, 100, 120 volts is going there. The problem with this that I see is just for me to get, so right now I'm at, let's say it's 60, 6% charge from 66 to 80%. Um, that's going to take eight hours. Eight and a half hours to get from 66 to 80%. For 14% range, it's going it's to take eight hours. So unless you're only driving like 10 miles, 20 miles a day, I mean, this probably isn't worth it. You also don't want to go any slower. If you charge, if you go this down like to eight amps or something, like a really slow charge rate, you can adjust this. The charger for the car is on board so you can adjust how many amps the the charger is pulling you can do it down to eight and look at how it 13 hours now it's only going at two hours two miles per hour here's the main concern i have with this is using this as like a long-term solution if you're using this and you're charging your car 10 to 12 hours a day on this kind of system and you're pulling the maximum 12 amps out of this outlet this this outlet I could see eventually failing. You could this thing's really going to get hot. The wire's going to get hot. You're pulling maximum amperage out of this outlet because it's a 15 amp outlet. You can only charge at 80 percent. That's 12. That's 12 amps. But if you're doing that for 10, 12 hours at a time every day, charging at maximum uh, charge rate for this outlet, you know, I think you're going to do some damage to this outlet. This, this outlet could melt. It could overheat. I don't think this is a good long-term solution. This is just a temporary solution. Let's say you just bought your car and you're waiting for the electrician to show up to get this. Okay, yeah, use this as a temporary solution, but don't use this ongoing. You're gonna be charging this for several years, every day, maximum amperage. I think you're gonna do damage to this. You're not gonna damage the car. The car is just gonna charge really slowly and very inefficiently. 
It's, you could do damage to your home electrical system by pulling maximum amps out of this small out amperage outlet. So I would advise not using this except on maybe occasional use where you don't have any other option. All right guys, so here's option two. Option one was doing the uh, 120 volt 15 amp plug that comes with the mobile connector. Second option is gonna be doing the NEMA 1450 plug. This can charge at 32 amps. So what you wanna have, have an electrician come out and wire this plug. This is the NEMA 1450 plug. That is if you're gonna go this route. Have, make sure you're getting an EV rated plug as well. There's plugs that are EV rated and there's some that are not. If you don't do an EV rated plug, there can be some uh, reports of these melting. This one's on a 50 amp breaker, but this will only charge at 32 amps. That's the limitation of this, of this cord, of this mobile connector here. So we just plug this in here and I'll plug it into the car and I'll show you the charging speeds that we get with this. If you do this long term, if you have this, you wanna get some kind of like a, a charge, like a, some, there, they sell these cradles that hold this. So that way it takes the strain and pressure off the plug so it's holding that as well as those cradles also have like a, a hook or something to be able to wrap the cord up so the way the cord is just not laying on the ground when you're not plugged in okay so here's our charging on the uh the nema 1450 plug this will only charge at 32 amps that's the maximum of the mobile connector so it doesn't matter what size breaker as long as if it's a 40 amp breaker or higher you're still only, only going to get 32 amps out of it now here's our charging stats if you can see we're charging in order to get from 66 to 81 percent, it's only going to take an hour and 30 minutes. You can see how much faster, 26 miles in an hour, 32 amps. Now, one thing this allows you to do is you can throttle down this. Let's say you don't want to pull the maximum because this is the maximum amps. Let's say you want only to do 30 amps or 29 or 28 amps. You can reduce that down to reduce the amount of heat, amount of amps that's coming through the mobile connector. When you do that, it does reduce it down a little bit but you have that ability. When you're plugging into the 120 volt, the 15 amp, you really can't reduce it down. The charge is so slow. But this, you can reduce it down and you still have very good charging speeds and you're not maxing out the amperage of the breaker, the wire, and the mobile charger. You can reduce it down for uh, a little bit. 23 miles in an hour as opposed to 26 so still pretty good over the course of 10 hours overnight that's 230 miles so if you're as long as you're driving under that this is uh, more than sufficient as far as using this style of charger and then to release the charger we just push down make you want to make sure the car's unlocked or your phone's near you to unlock this hold down the button when the when the light is white it unlocks it and then we can and this will just close automatically so buying the mobile connector, this new one is $300. It's actually PowerShare eligible, which if you have a cyber truck, you can buy this accessory and you can plug into the car and you can use the, the, the cyber truck's battery to power like your refrigerator or something like up to 20 amps. So this is an option you have a cyber truck. But the nice thing with the mobile connector is you buy it for $300, it gives you two charging options. So you can do the standard wall outlet, you can do the 1450. And then it also has six other adapters that you can buy if you need to and you keep that kit. Now I keep this kit in my car at all times. I don't charge regularly on this. I use this as a backup. So if I need to plug in somewhere, I have that ability to do so. What I charge my, all my cars in at my house is the wall connector. All right guys, so this is my Tesla wall connector. This is the best option. Uh, currently they're like $420 on the Tesla website. Uh, they should actually be cheaper to install than the NEMA 1450 outlet because they only use two power wires and a ground. They don't use the, the, the neutral wire, so you can actually use a cheaper wire. The, I have four of these installed in my garage because I have five cars, and these work awesome. The nice thing with these is they're versatile. You can install them with a, as, as little as a 20 amp breaker. You can do a 20 30, 40, 50, up to a 60 amp breaker. So if you have a, a lower amperage service at your house, let's say you only have a 100 amp service at your house, you can install this on a 20 or 30 amp breaker at 240 volts and it'll still charge the car at, you know, 20 miles in an hour even. And you'll, you'll get some very good charging rates even at lower amperage to fit your breaker and panel style. They have an app, they have uh, some security features where you can uh, only limit the cars that you want to charge. You can limit your car only, you can only have certain VIN numbers, or you can uh, have anyone charge on this. So there's some security features. You can install these outside and they'll charge your car outside. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know weather with these. So they have a little more versatility and they look really nice. This is how the back looks like. So you, you can wrap the cord around it 
when you're not using it. You can also change out these face plates to match the color of your car. They have four or five different colors to match your car. Now on this side of my garage, this is the universal wall connector. And the reason I have this one is it actually has, let's say you have a non-Tesla at your house. Let's say you got a Chevy Volt and you have a Tesla. You, this is a universal charging port for all other cars besides Tesla. So the universal wall connector provides that versatility to charge other cars. So you just slip that in there. If you don't push that button down, you just pull this handle out, the Tesla plug comes out and you can charge your, your Tesla there. The other thing I really like about the wall, the universal wall connector, it is more expensive. It's almost a $200 more uh, option than the uh, regular wall connector, but it's daisy chainable. So this connector is hooked up to that one down there and this one's the leader, that one's the follower, and they basically split 40 amps. I didn't have to run two circuits. It's on the same 50 amp outlet. They split 40 amps, so when both cars are plugged into either one of these, 20 amps is the max that either charge ca car can get. When only one car is charging, the max can get at 40. I, this is my other wall connector. I really like that it has a longer cord than the mobile charger as well, so it has a nice 24 foot long cord. So don't cheap out on your charging system at home. That's the whole beauty to having a Tesla, uh, an electric car, is just having it charge at your house overnight while you're sleeping. It's charged back up to your set limit every night. You don't have to worry about the gas station. You don't have to worry about charging. You don't have to go to a public charger. Get one of these installed. Invest in this. You know, have an electrician come out. Make sure that it's wired properly. It's up to code. And you'll be a set. You don't have to worry about it. And this is a great option. So, guys, those are the three options. Those are the basically the two products that Tesla offers, the mobile connector and this. Here's what I'd recommend doing, though, guys. Here, this is what I do. This is what I recommend is you want to buy the wall connector for your, your connector you're charging at home and then buy the mobile connector to keep in your car in case you need to charge when you're on the road, you're on vacation, you're somewhere else, you're, you're someone else's house, you can plug in your car when you need to. So I think that's kind of the, the ideal situation, buying both of them and then having this as your daily charging, the mobile connector is just kind of there if you need it as a backup. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Leave your comments down below, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.